I'm just going to try a couple of problems from our balancing the redox reactions worksheet uh, just to give you examples. And if you um, have done these problems there on the back side of the worksheet, I'm just going to do the last four of those. Uh, we're doing balancing redox reactions, and there are a couple of methods for this, but I'm going to use just the half reaction method. So looking at here, we say, okay, first off thing we need to figure out, well, what are the two kind of changes that take place? We can kind of see that manganese looks like it's making a change, and sulfur looks like it's making a change. So let's write out our two half reactions. And we'll do our sulfate, which is being formed from sulfite. Now what happens, we'll start with the, the manganese we said. First thing to do is to uh, balance any atom that is not oxygen or hydrogen. So in the first case that's manganese, we have one on each side, so that's good. Second thing, we want to balance our oxygens. And we have four oxygens on the left, so we're going to throw in four water molecules on the right. Because there's always water floating around. Now uh, we want to do our hydrogens. On the right hand side we have eight hydrogens. So on the left-hand side, we're going to add eight hydrogen ions because, again, there's always hydrogen ions floating around in these solutions. Last thing is we want to balance the charge. On the left side, we have eight and minus one, so we have plus seven on the left, plus two on the right. So we say which side is more positive? The left side is more positive. More positive by five, so we're going to add five electrons to the left side. For the second equation, we start with our sulfurs. So we have one sulfur, one sulfur. Next step we'll do is our oxygens. So we have four oxygens on the left, we have three on the right, so we're going to add one water molecule. That'll give us another oxygen. Third step is our hydrogens. We have two hydrogens on the left, so we're going to add two hydrogens on the right. Next thing we want to do is the charge. The left side is negative two, the right side is neutral, so the right side is more positive, more positive by two, so we're going to add two electrons. Now, we're going to go back and say we want the whole thing to be electrically uh, balanced as far as the electrons go. So the top one, we have five electrons, the bottom we have two, so we're going to take our top equation and completely multiply by two. So that'll make this 10, that'll make this 16, it would be 2, 2, and 8. The bottom we're going to multiply by 5. So that makes this 10, makes this 10, 5, 5, and 5. So we're going to put these two equations together. Uh, first off, we'll say, okay, we want to cancel out the 10 electrons. And we mentioned in class as well that that means if this comes up somewhere, and somebody says, what's the value of n? We would say n in this case is 10, and that's the number of moles of electrons that got canceled. Alrighty, at the same time here, we have um, 16 hydrogens on the first equation. We only have 10 in the bottom, so we'll cancel out all 10, and we'll make this a 6. And everything else looks like it's 10. No, here's water. So there's 5 waters here on the bottom. There's 8 waters. We'll take out those eight, and we will leave ourselves with three. I can't even add. Okay, so it's messy, but let's see if we can get this. We have two MnO2 minus two MnO4 minuses, and we have five SO3s, two minuses, turns into oh, I'm sorry. Plus we have six H pluses. And on the right, we have two Mn2 pluses, and we have five SO4 two minuses, and we have three waters. Phew, kind of messy. Um, the fact that this is acidic, it really comes down to the fact that in our equation, we have some H pluses in there, and that's fine. Let's try again. Here we have peroxide and iodide turns into water and iodine. So it's kind of obvious that our, 
peroxide is going to turn to water and our iodide will turn into iodine. Now back on our peroxide, everything we're going to balance everything except for oxygens and hydrogens, and so we're done. Now we're going to uh, balance our oxygens. On the left we have two, on the right we have one, so we're going to add another water. I don't have to write it that way, I'll just do it that way. Let me clean that up a little bit. Next thing we'll do our hydrogens. So on the right side we have four hydrogens, left side we have two. So I'm going to add two more hydrogen ions because they're always floating around. And that's all the atoms. Now the charge. Which side is more positive? The left side. So we're going to add two electrons to the left side. The bottom we're going to balance the atoms and we see that we're going to need two of our iodines to balance our iodines and that's all the atoms so charge which side is more positive it's more positive on the right more positive by two so we add two electrons now in this case it looks a little bit easier because the electrons cancel out so again if somebody asks what's the value of n n is equal to two and we can just put everything together so our final reaction here is two H pluses plus H2O2 plus two I minuses turns into two H2O's plus I2 and that's our finished equation. Okay, question nine. This is in a basic solution. So we're going to keep that in mind. We're not going to do anything with it until the last step. So our first equation looks like it would be arsenic. No, it's not arsenic. That's It contains arsenic. That would probably be the arsenite ion or arsenate. I don't know the name of this. Anyway, ASO3 can turn into ASO4, 3 minus. Let me fix that. And we can see our iodine it's going to change into iodide. So let's do the iodine first because it looks simple. Put a 2 for my eyes. The left side is more positive, so I'll add 2 electrons. Okay, for the first reaction, I got arsenic, arsenic, that's good. I have 3 oxygens and 4 oxygens, so I'm going to add a water. That'll give me 4 oxygens on each side. On the right side, I need to add 2 H pluses. And then I look at my reaction. On the left side, it's negative 3. On the right side, it's only negative 1. So the right side is more positive by 2. So I'll add 2 electrons. And we're going to go back and we will eliminate the electrons. Again, it's 2 electrons and 2 electrons. So that was easy. And if somebody asks, the value of n is equal to 2 for this reaction. And I don't see anything else that I can cancel out. So, my rough equation here is going to be water plus ASO3 3 minus plus 1I2 turns into ASO4 3 minus plus 2I minus. Now, here's where the basic part comes in. There's no way no, I'm, I'm lost. I forgot something. On the right-hand side, there should also be two H pluses. Okay. Um, the basic part is there's no way that I'm going to have two uh, um, hydrogen ions floating around in a basic solution. They are going to bump into two hydroxide ions, and that will turn into two waters. Now, if I added two hydroxides to the left side, I need to add two hydroxides to the... I said that wrong. Since I added two hydroxides to the right side, I have to add them to the left side. So now I have two waters on the right. I have one water on the left. So I'm going to eliminate that water and eliminate the two. So my final equation is going to be ASO3 3 minus plus I2 plus 2OH minuses turns into ASO4 3 minus plus 2I minus 
plus H2O. Hope you can read that. Okay, our last practice problem here is chromiums and chlorines. So we'll say Cr changes into CrO2, 1 minus, and we're going to have ClO4, 1 minus, turns into ClO3, 1 minus. The first equation, the chromiums are balanced. We need two oxygens, so we'll add two waters on the left. That gives us four hydrogens, so we're going to add four H pluses on the right. Total charge on the left is neutral. Total charge on the right is negative, I mean positive three. So I'm going to add three electrons on the right side of the equation. On the bottom one, my chlorines are good. Okay, I have four oxygens, three oxygens, so I'm going to add a water. I have two hydrogens on the right, nothing on the left, so I'm going to add two H pluses. And again, uh, looking at my charges, I have negative on the right, and I have plus one on the left, so the left side is more positive by two, so I'm going to add two electrons. Now, this time I have two electrons on the left, I have three electrons on the right, so I'm going to multiply everything on the top by two, and multiply everything on the bottom by three. So by two, that'll make this six. By 2, that'll make this 8. By 2 is 2, 2, and 4. On the bottom, by 3, that'll make this 6. 3, that'll make this 6. 3, 3, and 3. Let's see if we can put this equation together. Um, I would say that I have, okay, 6 electrons. Let's cancel them out. And how about hydrogens? Eight hydrogens and six hydrogens. So I can cancel out six here and make this a two. And I have four waters on the left, three waters on the right. So all three waters can go away. And that turns into a one. Phew. So my equation here is going to be 2Cr plus 3ClO4 negatives plus H2O turns into 2 CrO2 1 minuses plus Cl3 ClO3 1 minuses and I think I still have two H pluses. Okay, it would be better if I had a little bit bigger piece of paper. Now, uh, again this is the basic solution so I'm going to add two hydroxides to each side It's going to make two waters on this side. And so two waters and one water, this one water will cancel, and the two changes to a one. So my final equation will be 2Cr plus 3ClO4 minus plus 2OH minus turns into 2CrO2 1 minus plus 3ClO3 1 minus plus H2O. And there we've balanced four kind of tough reactions.